Benvinguts a una altra sessió d'aquestes que fem de Hashtag Europe Calls, que és aquesta marca que vam crear ja fa anys per acostar els ajuts europeus al sector cultural. Fonamentalment l'audiovisual, perquè com molts sabeu, Europa Creativa és el programa de la Comissió Europea, que té dos programes germans, el de cultura i el de mèdia. Nosaltres, la Maria, la Natàlia i jo, som el barret de mèdia audiovisual, per tant la majoria de gent de vosaltres sou d'audiovisual, i també tirem un cable a la gent de cultura que té l'equip a Madrid per aconseguir que el sector cultural tregui ajuts supranacionals i complementi els seus projectes i els seus plans de finançament. Però el que ens porta avui aquí és una de les convocatòries reines que tenim, reines de pressupost i reines de candidatures, que és la de Development Call, que té una convocatòria a l'any, per any pressupostari, i que té dos calls de suport. I ara ens ve una que se'ns acosta a ara a l'abril. I com anirà la sessió? Doncs bé, ho de sempre. L'Àlex explicant-vos les novetats, les coses que no us heu de deixar en aquesta candidatura, per aquesta o per els anys, el proper any, però en lloc de portar algun study case del nostre univers en el sector que ha sigut premiat amb l'ajut a development, que en tenim molts i si heu vingut heu après amb la generositat amb la qual els companys us ho han compartit. Hem tingut l'Astor Media, hem tingut Distinto Films, hem tingut, he de recordar, hem tingut la Sandra Tàpia, també ens ha vingut, ha vingut per Eurimash. Tenim un Star System. Properament hem tingut el Nobert Lleras, que és recent. Esperem comptar amb l'Estefani Bollocovic en un futur proper, perquè ens expliqui la seva experiència. És a dir, sempre l'Star System que existeix, és a dir, els catalans traiem ajut de mèdia i sempre és bo revertir-ho en els companys que estan en vies de treure'l. Però hem fet una combinatòria. En guany no hem volgut portar, aquesta vegada no hem volgut portar un study case. Hem fet una cosa, hem fet dos en uno. Què és el que portem fent des de fa uns anys a l'oficina? És... Si la Mahoma no va a la muntanya, portar la muntanya a la Mahoma. Què és? Si el professional no es veu en cor o no té pasta o encara no sap si és el taller que li va bé d'anar a formar-se a fora perquè no té temps, no té diners, igual no parla anglès, també és possible, doncs portar-li l'iniciativa aquí i fer-li un tast. Sabeu que Mèdia dona suport a moltes iniciatives de formació, moltíssimes, molt variades, de molts sectors, de molts nivells, nivell preschool, nivell formació de formadors, etc. Quina és la que tenim molta confiança nosaltres? La gent de Sources. Portem molts anys col·laborant-hi i hem portat diferents experts. Sources fa tallers a Noruega, tallers a Berlín, mireu la convocatòria, i l'Araix és el nostre comitat que representaré, és un dels tutors. També heu estat, en part les edicions, els tutors que hem tingut, com el Goberto Ferrari o el Miguel Machalski. Què és el que oferim nosaltres? Oferim un tast, és el mètode Sources, amb sessions de script check gratuïtes per vosaltres, prèvia selecció de projecte. I ha semblat molt bo, molt bo, molt bona idea fer la combinatòria. És a dir, com que Mèdia demana un requisit artístic molt bo i un requisit de development de projecte que estigui molt treballat, perquè us posen punts, ja ho explicarem amb quina escala de punts, fer la combinatòria. És a dir, com farem aquest estiu aquest taller de script check, si voleu participar-hi, l'Araix serà el vostre tutor, explicar si us interessa què podem fer per vosaltres a Sources a Noruega o a Berlín en aquests cursos, el Norbert, per exemple, em consta, Lleras va fer l'script check, aquest tast que fem amb nosaltres, després va demanar l'ajut de development, se'n va anar a fer els sources a Noruega i ara té l'ajut de mèdia. No és una equació que sempre es doni, però amb certs projectes es pot donar. L'Anna Bofarull, per exemple, ara se'n recordo, acaba de ser seleccionada a l'atelier. Anna Bofarull, que aboga amb el projecte Sinjar, ha fet el mateix recorregut. I ara parlarem de més coses perquè no vull avançar-me a fer la promo perquè ho he de fer jo mano a mano amb l'Araix. Tot això va amb anglès. Esteu free to make any questions at any time because don't forget that you have me any time at the office for free or call me or an email but Araix is a superstar so in this case we reverse the order. El telonero va després i l'estrella va antes. Araix, welcome. 
And we are Thank thrilled you. to have you. Uh, this is a kind of an experiment where uh, we are trying to do a win-win situation, like promoting an activity of our desk that usually we are launching uh, in during the spring and you selecting the projects through sources in Berlin or through the mentor. And then six, this, this year only four, unfortunately for uh, budget cut, are selected and they have the chance to be in Barcelona two full days uh, making a kind of a questions to the mentor. So uh, you're going to explain that plus what we can get applying for the development call. But we want to go further. It's about your experience in sources, about the training course, about the possibilities that uh, the producers of documentary and fiction, they have um, to uh, get more better muscle and better quality in the training course. So we are thrilled to have you. Um, let me introduce you uh, briefly. Uh, but uh, Aras is a scriptwriter, is director and producer from the company Golden Girls. They've been active for at least 15 years. It's, I'm so wrong, more or less. Uh, 2007, 2006, uh, there is still uh, works in, in different categories. You work hand on hand with your brother. And uh, the, the nice thing is that you are really, and it is excellent, in a world of audiovisual, well, is, uh, is an asset or a must, I would say, to be connected. You will really know a lot of people in the business. Uh, which is make you very nice to have the kind of a networking where you are uh, mentoring. So thank you for being with us. And uh, I will, I will, the floor is yours, but I will, if I think that there is any questions that could be interesting for the audience, I will interrupt you in a very polite way. Thanks for being Thank with us. Thank you very Arash, much. The floor is yours. For your nice words. Thank you for coming and taking your time. Um, I think uh, maybe I explain you a little bit how I got into this project of sources because um, I'm like you. Uh, maybe most of you uh, is the same. I I'm an autodidact. I um, I'm an Iranian um, son of refugees who came to Austria when I was nine years old in the early 80s and like all Iranians there are few choices either you sell carpets you go you become a doctor or you become a computer engineering so I I decided to become a doctor and I studied one-third of medicine so that was it but in school I started to make sh short films um, and decided to Later was the chance to start in the Austrian TV for the youth department that I, I started there and I had this idea of um, writing a fiction film about the whole thing that happened when, um, when we fled Iran. And I worked on that for six years and applied in 2000 for sources as a participant. And this was like the first time I, I came into contact with that program um, and it was amazing. So the, the main so the sources workshops are, um, I mean, there are three kinds of workshops. The, the huge one is where you apply with your docu creative documentary or fiction f project in a treatment or first script phase. You apply with that. Then in, if you get selected, you will um, go to a workshop that is for one week. You have three, normally there are three groups with three advisors. In each group there are four to five projects and it's very collaborative. It's not like the advisors sitting there telling you what to do. It's more a group of professionals. Some of them um, sometimes um, have even made more films than the advisor, but it's not about who has more experience in filmmaking. Um, I think every filmmaker, even if you're the best, needs at one point, support from others in from a dramaturgical point of view and so on. Because we all get blind at one point. We don't see the distance anymore um, and so on. Although I'm not a, I'm coming from another culture um, than the European culture. So for us, like having distance is not the highest uh, thing. You know, we want to be close to the topics. We want to be close to people and so on. So. That was kind of defining me, but it was very important to get feedback from professionals, um, and that's what you get in sources. So you ha you are in a group for one week, 
normally in remote places in order not to be distracted. Sometimes it's, for example, in north of Norway, in a film camp, former military um, <laughs> place. You know, there is nothing um, but like green hills and sometimes you see bones of um, dead uh, reindeer or something when you walk around. But you have time to concentrate, to write, to get feedback from everyone for a concentrated week. Then you separate for three months. In these three months, you can have uh, online consultations. You write the next one or two drafts of your script. And then you meet again for four or five days in, the, in another place. Normally, it's the place where the advisor is. And then you go again through your project. So this, I myself did this with my first film, For a Moment Freedom. I did it with, my, with two of my documentaries and um, at, in 2010 um, my former advisor um, who was kind of my mentor um, David Wingate asked me if I, um, I, I, I I want to work also for them because he saw some some something in me anyway so I did this and I went through it and now I'm producing fiction and documentary for 10 15 years and I always try also to see to send the writers and directors to sources if they are selected to 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 make the projects because um, it's extremely helpful. Sometimes we work on our scripts for years, but we don't work on them in a concentrated way. We have our daily lives, daily problems. We have to do this and that, and this one week or two weeks of concentrated time sometimes saves one year of of slow work. So I really can recommend that. What we are here promoting is um, like kind of a mini version of that, um, which we will do in summer. Uh, we call it a script check. Um, and I was myself, I did this some, some years ago um, here. Um, and I, I, at first I thought, okay, what can you do in two, three hours? And then um, I did it and I was surprised that you can really do a lot in two, three hours. If you're sitting together, if um, you are w going through the, the project in detail from a pro uh, professional point of view, from a point of view of a director, um, and I, um, because I work as a director, um, producer and advisor, I can switch my um, point of view um, when we work together and jump through this, um, you know, like, in, in, in these characters because sometimes I know like when you work with your producer, they, the producer wants something else, uh, the distributor wants something else. I'm like now in summer I, I shot a fiction film as a director and now I'm in the editing process and I see the distributor wants a more happy ending. This, the, the producer wants the film to be sellable uh, and so on and so on. And I have to find the, the way in between what I want. And of course, um, when you come to such workshops, you are filled with a lot of fear. I know that from myself, from the friends and people that I send there. First is the language. You think, okay, I cannot speak so, so good English, what can I do, and so on. Don't worry about that, because none of us can speak very good English. And um, very few time there is a really <laughs> kind of a, a great English speaker. It's not about that. It's more about if, if we see in a project the potential and where we can still work on, on, on the weaknesses, that ha doesn't have anything to do with the language. It has to do with the language of cinema, not with the language of how we, we speak. So we understand it. We are all cinema lovers. We can look at the project. We can see where uh, we want to go. And one other thing that I have to say is that the goal of sources, uh, and, and it's there since um, uh, 26 years, I have some facts that I will read for you. The goal of us, uh, um, there is no sources method. This is something that is important to say. Because we believe that every film is like an individual, and every film needs its own dramaturgy, its own sensitivity, and so on. It's like a human being. and. That's why when we work on films in the workshops, we don't try to put on the workshop like seat fields or make key or whatever 
books you know there. You know, of course, sometimes it's useful to work with plot points. Sometimes it's useful with work to work with a different uh, kind of structure. Sometimes I had very good experience in taking a documentary story and trying to see if, for example, you take the hero's journey um, and try to see if it fits to the documentary elements, suddenly for some participants it was great. They said, okay, now finally I see how I want to structure that documentary. So it's very open, it's very open-minded. Um, we have, uh, sometimes we have, for example, um, a great uh, guy coming uh, to us, uh, he's called Paul Taylor. Uh, he's working with Lego, um, like Lego pieces. So he comes always with his suitcase uh, of eight kilo Lego. <laughs> he has always problems at the airport. And then you sit there and he comes into the room, he spreads all the Legos on the table, and then he makes kind of a constellation of your story. So he asks you who chooses one Lego for your main character and then choose one Lego for your main problem or your goal and stuff. And it's like, you know, like this kind of um, experimental ways also how to develop a feeling for, for the structure, uh, for the missing parts and so on. So don't be afraid of language problems. We can solve them. Don't be afraid of um, making a fool out of yourself because we are all fools. Um, and um, it's also very, a um, very intimate situation. Um, everything that we talk stays in the room, except of today because they're recording it. But <laughs> um, yeah, when we're there, it's like really people respect that. Don't be afraid that someone steals your story because when you're there, you have so many witnesses that it was your story. Um, and um, and um, maybe I, 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 yeah, and then there is a third workshop for, um, for sources. This is for mentoring. It's, um, it's a workshop where you are three, four days. Um, it's more for professionals who are working in the field of dramaturgy or mentoring or commissioning editors from TV. And there we go through we have three um, advisors. Um, one works with synopsis, one works with treatment, one works with fi uh, with a feature script, and it's more about how to talk to writers and um, creative people in order not to block them, in order to support them, in order to nourish their f creativity in order to help them to get rid of their writer's blocks and so on and so on. So, uh, What was the deadline for the mentor sources? I think it was like some two weeks ago, but you can maybe try to see if you can still apply. Yes, yeah. thank you. Um, and that's also very helpful. There again, we don't teach a special method, but we go through the different possibilities and situations and cases that can happen in our life as creatives and producers and so on. Because we all know it, we watch, we, we, we read something, we see something, we think we know best how is what is good for that project. But a lot of times we don't know what's the best because we didn't listen. We have to f understand what is the goal of the director. And if the goal of the director is to have an impressionistic 90 minutes film I don't know, about fishing and no story in it, that's fine. I mean, if you think of some great projects, like for example, Leviathan, the documentary, I don't know if you know it. Um, it's an amazing film, there is no story and so on, but if you would have put a normal structure on that, this would ruin the film. So. What I, what I want to say is that we try at sources to support what you want to do. And I think that's also the main, um, should be the main goal of a dramaturg, not to make the story the way he or she likes it, but the way you really want to do it. It's possible that sometimes you are wrong and, um, or you are not aware of all the consequences of your decisions. And that's also something to discuss during the workshop.
So I, I, I give you some facts. So Sources is uh, since 20 years. There is probably one of the longest existing media um, projects. And what I, I really like there, along with the AVE, are yeah. the senior ones supported by the media program from the beginning of the program. Don't forget media, it's been in the market for 28, 29 years yeah, yeah. already. Yeah, and this is 26 years. And um, what I like is that it's one of the few workshops where you're only concentrated on the development of the story. It's not about producing, it's not about selling, it's just about the content, how to make the content strong. And I interrupt here because it's kind of a DJ, I mix yes. the yes. thing, my stories in media, and we will see later the application for all of you that you know already or not, it's 100 points and it's 50 points strictly for the content. Nothing to do about how you're selling or how you're producing or how you're financing. They're going to give you the points for the other 50 for those strategies. But about the project, it's 50 points just about the project. That's why you are uh, sources is an asset. Yeah, it's 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 really helpful. Um, and there are not so many workshops where they concentrate only on this aspect. Um, and everywhere you go and you know, like you talk to people. What is important if I want to make a film, I want to make it or, I don't know, realize a film, everyone says story, story, story. So this is, the uh, and for me it was also the same. When I, um, I wrote this um, story of this, my first fiction film for a moment, Freedom, it was um, six years of work. I was no one, no one knew me. I, I didn't have, uh, you know, I didn't go to film school and stuff like that. Um, I finished a documentary about my family called Exile Family Movie, and that was kind of um, that. By the way, I also developed that sources, and this film uh, won in Leipzig and and other places, and it was kind of a door opener. So sometimes it's also good to work w uh, on a documentary and then move into fiction if you are interested in that. And for a moment, freedom, it was considered as an impossible film to make for first film anyway because it was too complicated and it had 12 main characters and it was uh, very expensive, 3.5 million euros and so on. But in the, way, in the end, the only reason I think I could manage to do it was the, the story. The story, because it came from inside me, I needed to say it, I needed to tell it. I went to workshops, I went to sources, I went to Sundance Lab and I developed it and developed it till at one point it was good enough that um, it was not so easy to reject it, and that helped me. And of course, sources helped me also to develop it. And it's a little bit like a quality stamp. When 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 you're there, the film funds also because they know the project, the program for so long, they trust you more. You know, like in, I have the feeling that um, they they think okay, even if they are not so happy with your script, maybe hundred percent, but they say okay. Mm, they went to sources, they have still this dramaturg. By the way, you can continue to work with your dramaturgic advisor um, later, and you have to pay a, to pay a small fee, but um, it's possible to, to continue to work if this six months period is not enough for you. So some, some um, um, more facts. There has been 100, more than 100, Euro, uh, 100 workshops in 22 European countries and um, more than 170 films have been made. Um, yeah, the, some, some, maybe some titles, for example, some Catalan films, recent films, was Summer of uh, Summer 1993 by Carla, Carla Simon, was very, um, very successful. It was at the Berlinale, and I think it was also um, nominated for European f uh, Film Awards. Facing the, w the Wind by Mericel Collet. Maricel Collet. Maricel um, Staff Only. Both, both Staff Only, uh, three Staff Only, Neus. Uh, they've been in the script checks in previous years in the, what we do, the taste of sources. Yeah, that was also in Berlinale. Then other projects who premiered 2018 in San Sebastian from Spain was Journey to Felia. Mother's Room. It is a poker, a poker of, okay, fourth one, yeah. <laughs> Then uh, Margolaria, you know that Margolaria, Oyer Aranzabal mm. documentary. I, I need then to read. Sorry about that. Um, 
very famous uh, like international film was Girl. Uh, which won last year. Lucas Don't. Um, we are so happy about that project. Yeah. We we did, uh, and probably you know because we promote that, as the European Film Awards they were giving in Seville for the first time, where yeah. usually they announce the nominees. We decide, uh, the family of uh, media desks in Spain, to do a lot of activities. And we did the director of photography of Cold War and blah, blah, blah. But the main star in all the activities yeah. for around the award where Lucas Dont and uh, the responsible of sources, Marion, came to introduce Lucas and Lucas make a masterclass about the sources of inspiration, which is quite difficult because it's yeah. just one movie. But so what he got inspired to do that wonderful movie before the awards was, was great. Uh, if you didn't see a girl, media supported film, or the value chain, sources, another superstar. Yeah, it, can, it, it got in Cannes last year, the uh, Camera d'Or for best first film, and then a lot of other awards and European Film Awards as Discovery of the Year. Then there was Cops um, that I produced. It's, uh, it, it got uh, FIPA, um, like main award of FIPA for best drama. Then uh, like Heavy Trip from Finland, Comic Sans from Croatia, Cloud Boy, Holland, and so on and so on. Lou Andreas Salome, Austrian German, which was very successful. No, me pregunta es en els els assessoraments del sí. que fareu al juliol, yeah, com yeah. funcionen? Ah, yeah, we're gonna publish the the call. Sorry, uh, Maria, my colleague, prepare in the in the information we're gonna give you. This in this PowerPoint uh, summarize what we request more or less that it's here, boom boom boom, more or less. It's we're gonna give that. But tomorrow or Monday we're gonna publish the call like uh, uh, when you have to present the project and uh, which is the requirements. The more or less you can see here the summary, the sum, what we require to se to be selected. And the selection is in hands of sources uh, in Berlin and Arash. We don't know. We have to send the projects. We're going to select only four. Usually we select, you select only four. We select usually we, in mm. the past we did six uh, because this year we have uh, budget cut it from both sides, from sources in Germany and from our office. We only can pay for because it is for free. Uh, we can pay just for four, four projects. So out, let's say, in previous years, depending. I remember with uh, Machalski like two years ago maybe we got 12 applications 14 applications and we select six well uh, last year with Gualberto more or less was around the same who knows this time with Arash and the, the doing this session like a promo I expect to have more on the on the pro on the con is in English which with Walberto and Machalski is in Spanish, which, as he said, don't be afraid of language pro problems. Don't be afraid to ideas to be stolen. First of all, because in our script checks, you are alone. Um, in, a, in a very special way, uh, time, I will be there this year if you need me to support you, if any one of the team feel not comfortable with English. But usually I'm not there, so it's really intimate, you and the mentor. So usually, yeah, out of 16, 14, 18, we will select six, this time only four. So there is quite good chances. Anyway, if you're Basically not selected. Basically, it's based, it's based on, yeah. on the quality. It's based on the possibilities. It's based on the possibility to go to sources. You're not obliged. First of all, this is, not, this is a promo session of my script checks and of the initiative of Trend Media, which I am allowed to do it because it's media supported. So it's perfectly done, promotion of a training initiative. But you're not obliged, you're not committed. Anna Bufarul decided to go because she liked it and she was really on the project. Nurber Llaras decided to do it. As a two examples, they did both, but you're not obliged. But uh, it's based on the quality, it's based specifically on the possibilities to go, as I will explain later, to a European level, to international level for media. It means no vull documentals de castellers de TV3. Ja m'enteneu, és a dir, hi ha un tipus de producte que és perfecte, que funciona molt bé, que alimenta el sector i que ens dona molta categoria, perquè som impecables en aquest sentit, però el que busca media és la transnacionalitat. Per tant, heu de saber-ho, es pot fer un documental en blanc i negre, en 3D, 
de qualitat en pantalla de cine i s'ha fet l'enxaneta. Meravellós. Però ja heu vist per on anem. Per tant, es busca aquesta perspectiva. Es busca el documental que l'Estefani Bolukovic ara ha tret recentment amb ajut de mèdia, es pot dir, perquè va sortir seleccionada. Es busca aquest nivell. Els processos que teniu vosaltres, i vosaltres ja sabeu què feu a nivell local, nacional i internacional. Ho heu de saber. Si no ho sabeu això... Llavors, aquells que té la perspectiva internacional són aquests als que heu de presentar en aquesta convocatòria de Scripture. Eva, go ahead. Hello. I'm Eva Fontanals from Arpa Films and I wanted to ask if in this call I think that you are mixing all kind of works. So it can be documentary, it can be fiction. Isn't that it? The script check and in sources as well, yeah. Yeah, okay. And I have a second question, but it's more for media. Maybe I can ask it afterwards. Oh yeah, I prefer that. Yeah, I can do that, Eva. Okay, thank you. Yes, I would like to know if the sources check, that the script check is a kind of a pre-selection then for the sources or is there then another selection process, I guess, for the participation? Good one, good one. There is no, no, that's not a pre-selection. So if, that's what I wanted to say, if you are not selected, because, I mean, it's clear there are just four places, it's possible that six, seven, eight projects are great, we can just only take four, that's doesn't mean anything. It's the same like a lot of times you apply with a great project to funding, you don't get it, you don't understand it, and then you apply next time and it works. So don't feel that your project is bad if you're not selected for the script check, you can still apply for the next main sources workshop and that's even better because it's longer and you have like more time. Um, I think one, one point is also the cost of sources workshop. This one is free. This script check, the other one costs, I think, around 2,000 euros, um, which, of course, for a lot of filmmakers is a lot of money. I don't know how it is in, in Spain, but in Austria it's like this because the project, uh, the, the program is so respected. If we are selected, we can apply for some um, support from the film fund and they, they pay normally two-thirds of the cost of a workshop, which is like 2,000 for the, for the workshop. And then there is like, um, you have to um, buy a plane ticket, but the rest, like the, you don't have to pay for food and, and accommodation you, during you the being, workshop. You were being bad because you were uh, explaining the object of desire of the local producers. Yeah. And it's possible, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm no, but I, I mean, I have to say it because it's, co of course, the, the, the money thing is like an, an issue for a lot of us and it's like important to, to say, okay, this is a great project, but I, I don't have the money. But what I can say from a point of view of a filmmaker and, 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 and as a director or, or no matter director or producer is that these 2,000 euros that you spend, um, in the end, you want to make a film that costs, I don't know, 100, 200, 300, 2 million, and compared to the effect that it has for for your the content for your story and um, how much it can push your project to be funded, it's uh, it's really like really worth it. So um, uh, I wanted to know if it's possible to apply with the first draft of the script for script checks, or if it has to be the treatment. Uh, we prefer the treatment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's been said because um, uh, it takes. If we have a lot of projects, uh, they need to read the script, and it's a lot, a lot of work. Yes, yeah, so it's just a treatment. We prefer. Yeah, it doesn't. What mean does it mean? It prefer mean means it doesn't mean theoretically it's possible. The later, <laughs> yeah, no, the later on. But it's difficult. The later on, you can uh, you can bring additional material once they they pick it up. Yeah. It's what uh, it's agreed with uh, sources at this early stage. Yeah, it's a basic a question of money. It's the same in media, in media development, which is really a nice call for support. The people in the agency always are complaining, not what the money they give to the producer is about the cost behind to assess projects that never going to get the money because they have to assess the yes and the no's. And that's what gets in their nerves. So that's why they are so picky with eligibility criteria and so and so about what you're presenting. That's, that's it. 
Um, I, I, I will play a game with you, maybe I will say a sentence and you have to, s to say yes or no. Okay. It's okay? It's a kind of a, a new game. Are you ready for that? Absolutely. Okay. Do you agree with the following sentences? Sources is a considerable enacement of the project. Yes. <laughs> I think it's they are very in terms easy of no no it's com it's getting complicated <laughs> it's getting complicated. Do you think it's the end of the writer's isolation? Yes, good definitely. It's good savings for the project. Yeah. In terms of critical understanding, it's more art or more business. Definitely art. Definitely art. Yeah. Yeah. If it's great art, okay. it can also it's be art, great yes business. No. <laughs> ah, you like the game. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, and then uh, this: Would you like to? Uh, would you like the sources? Would we remember that collaboration is a way of life? Yeah, I think it's also. I have to add, uh, like one or no, uh, yes or no is not enough. Um, Good. <laughs> that, that, that's why I am provoking you. No, it's I'm like provoking because, you because I am. A, I am tackling the part of you promoting yeah. as a man of sources, but I'm tackling your your director producer yeah, the yeah. soul that you have inside. Yeah, about I think what is very important is like, of course, writers, directors are at least in the process of preparing a project, writing it very lonesome. Then they meet the producers, or from the beginning the producers are on board, and then starts this kind of love-hate relationship between writer, director, and producer. It should be love, but sometimes it's not. Um, and what sometimes I, I, I observed is that when you go to the main sources workshop, you go as the, 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 the writer or director, writer, director goes, and the producer can go too. And what is interesting is that this relationship of them changes because they are set in the middle of other people. And they have to, the producer, for example, who is kind of a lot of times the guy or the, the woman who has more power or thinks who has more power, um, understands suddenly what kind of treasure this project is, what kind of um, openness he or she has to have to develop it and so on and so on. So it really helps to unblock complicated situations, relationships and so on. And that's very good, yeah. Um, it's also possible that after a workshop um, you as a writer or producer decide that maybe we're not the right match, you know? Maybe another producer or another uh, person is better for that project. I don't know if that happens, but it's possible, of course, that happens because during that intense project um, development time, you also get to know your partner better. Because in normal life, maybe you meet your producer as a writer once a month for two hours, which means at the end of two years, maybe you have one w week, <laughs> and here you have one week intensively, and then you decide. Um, question, because in sources, I maybe it's mine it's better to present early stage or uh l the last version of your script which is the best you can go you can go with really early development mm -hmm. and then get the most and maybe get confused but so many voices that are going to intervene because you were really early in your pregnancy or pregnancy or you were really 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 advanced with your project and then you were open to uh, to enhance the project, but on a way that never is going to change because you, you already you know where you're going. Which is I think um, I think it's more something in between mm -hmm. because when you're too early, it's possible that the potential of your idea is not readable yet, and also that when you come to the workshop, you are with professionals who are much further, and then you might block the group because you're you know like you don't even know who is your main character or you know so i suggest that you apply uh, with a later version 
maybe second, third, whatever. I mean, we all know sometimes the first version is the fifth version. It's the first version that you want someone to read, but you wrote a lot of other versions. So you have to decide yourself. It's not about the number of the version. It's about, about the development of the project. But I think it helps sometimes when you think that's my story, but something is wrong with it. So let's get feedback. If you, one month before shooting, two months before shooting, I think you, it's nice to be on the workshop if you select it, but it's not so much changing. For documentaries, I think it's, it's quite helpful. That's a little bit of difference. So if you have a documentary and you want to shoot it in three months, four months, it's helpful to come to go through the material, like to go through the, to the, the script, prepare yourself good for the workshop, uh, for, the, for the shooting, have the workshop, after the workshop, first workshop, you go to shoot, your first um, shootings or whatever, and then when you meet after three, four months for the second follow-up workshop, you have material, you can show it, we can discuss it and so on. So. That, that would be my answer. Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, yes, I I think in the next sheet you have it. When is the workshop in summer? Yeah. Um, we are. She's asking about the dates, about when you're going to come to Barcelona, and it's it's some because we we like to do it before when going people are going on vacation, but after all the the summery thing of a springy festival thing. So always happens so in July. So because sunny side is finishing the twenty third. But 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 we can we can try to do it. Uh, Finding the, the uh, finding the right date. Yes. Everything it's an accommodation because basically it's four projects. Probably end of June. Huh? It's it's Last four projects. Yeah. Four projects. So we we can't kind of find dealing with the producer. Okay, and uh, yeah, who is welcome? The producer, the director, both. Yeah, it's nice because uh, in the past, because this is now I'm linking DJ mixing, uh, linking with the, what you get the most from this script check into the media if you decide to apply for media on the next call, next October, or yes. in April 2020, yeah. uh, we like to do like a follow-up of what happened with the project regarding uh, de uh, development, financing, and distribution strategies. So that's, that's why in the previous years we get a mentor for content and a mentor for producing strategies. That was Edgar Tenenbaum as well in Spanish was two hours and then two hours later on and they get the whole thing. Who attends? It's nice if you can get the scriptwriter, the director and the producer. Can come the three of them together. It's you have another three of them at the same time, two or two, but not one definitely because then you're missing something in the project at the stage it is. This year, Harash, because he's a scriptwriter, director and producer, that's not doing two hours and two hours, doing three hours per project and, uh, uh, and on sessions of uh, development and, uh, and uh, strategies about how it's going on, something else about what you have uh, to go ahead. And who is applying, doesn't matter if the director apply and send the application or the producer, it doesn't matter, it's not important, no? Uh, no, it's always we need a company, uh, okay. it's like media. Okay. We don't deal with uh, directors or screenwriters alone. Has to be supported by a company behind. Ah, so the, the young people, let's say, which have no company, can't N apply. N no, uh, I have to say uh, no, unless they don't have a company behind. Because the, the idea is that those company, those projects are are sooner or later to go into production okay. and to be media media applied. Don't forget, media loves new talent. They like it. They like to build bridges with the new generation, uh, and they have some measures, policy makers, to introduce that in slate funding, in training, and uh, as a bonus point in so many calls. But the bottom line is an industrial, industrial program. So they need the projects to be done and to have a kind of a structure. Even, we know that in some countries, the structure sometimes is really, really fragile. Like Romania, for example. So my question is, in these two sessions of 90 minutes, you're doing both? Yes. So then it can be, two sessions. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. in yeah, 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 yeah. 
to it yeah, yeah. says first part yes. 90 minutes second part 90 yeah. minutes but it can so be flexible so if we see that we need two hours for exactly. creative That's and only one hour for production exactly. we can be flexible no worries perfect that was my question yeah sorry um i just wanted to ask are series welcome or it's just one off so far it was one off because there are workshops specialized on series mm -hmm. I think that's like, I mean, if you have a script uh, issue, mm -hmm. you can of course apply. But I think for series, there are other workshops that are connected also to series festivals like series media and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's more collaborative and it's more helpful for your project. Thank you. Eva, si vols, you, you entenc, eh? Uh, um, in English it's better for Irish, of course. Um, we know media knows how the market is evolving, how uh, the audience as well is evolving, and the trends, the wizard trends, never is granted how many years are going to be a trending thing. But nowadays, we know that the thing is on television. So more and more, even uh, TV programming, uh, Call for Support, is going into television, giving more money, uh, trying to get more money. Training initiatives are asking from the senior ones to do things regarding television. We are uh, being, we are watching how more markets are supported, that they are working on festivals, working on Serializado, uh, the Series Fest, um, regarding Can and MIP, they have that kind of a bonus on series, so we know that. But if you check the examples that we have been showing about the Catalan star system, uh, Celia, Merichel, uh, Neus, uh, and so on, you see the kind of project that you have the possibility to, to introduce the sources. Because in a way, there is no sources method, as Hara said, but we have a kind of a personality as a Catalan project that we can apply in terms of how much finance you can raise, how much chance you can give to the new talent, and which is the kind of project that we can handle, more or less. You, what I'm saying is, I don't see a project of Telecinco going a script check for uh, sources. You, you got me, isn't it? Because they, they know other ways to get a script check or to get improved money towards the market mainstream they are looking for. Okay, thank you. Uh, just, I was not thinking of something of Telecinco, but no, no, no. Uh, you know, uh, documentary make, filmmakers, they are asking us for series also. Uh, yeah, 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 there sure. are lots of TV stations that, I, I aware, that, I'm aware. that, that are uh, living uh, one-offs. And I, I also, uh, non-fiction series that are not exactly documentary but are non-fiction series so it's just something that has been asked in the market and it's not at all telethinko content oh sorry i i, I uh, i'm excused what I'm, i was trying to say and probably even mention is that series they need more development because uh, they need uh, a longer period and more things to be to be checked i put the example regarding more about the babies we were born and on our script checks. That's why I was not not more talking about the content of sources, but our script checks. Yes, but I agree. Yeah, thank yeah, you. But I mean, of course, I can imagine that we work on a non-fiction series on within the framework of the workshop. Of course, it's possible because it's all about dramaturgy. But I think what you're saying is right because if you work on a five-part, forty-five minutes or one-hour series the whole dramaturgy of the whole thing is much more complicated. And you need more than maybe this week that is for one. So you could develop the pilot of the series, for example, during the workshop and have a plan for the rest, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Doncs, mira, jo he vist que per l'accés del programa es demanen moltes uh, dades tècniques que són confidencials de l'empresa. I una mica volia saber de l'empresa, de la productora en si, i volia saber una mica quin tractament es faran d'aquestes dades. I, i, bueno, I si hi ha, doncs, eh, un, per exemple, el que és el pla de negoci, també es demana un, un, quin és el total de, del capital de, de producció. Clar, són qüestions que són bastant tècniques i ja per la meva part estan bastant desenvolupades. No? Llavors volia saber quin tractament se'n faria de tot em això. Em recordes la teva productora? Profimatec. Profimatec, gràcies. Sí, eh, bueno, estem en procés de, de producció eh, d'un llargmetratge i, i bueno, doncs, eh, m'agradaria provar a veure si, si seria apte per aquest programa.
He entès la primera part de la pregunta era producció de dades i la segona part de la pregunta era si seria... o eren dos en una o era un... Sí, per una part eren, bueno, doncs la protecció de les dades i després, doncs, l'escala de finançament o veure si pel tema del cost de producció o de la producció hi hagués alguna limitació. So, the first part is easy because it's about policy regulations that we, you know, the the protection data that we mentioned before about uh, the May last year. The second part is about if it is, there's a limit about budget on the projects. See, you mean if the project is yeah, it's a kind of a uh, with kind of expensive, is small, too expensive or yeah, small, it should be small, no. big one. This is I mean, no, not Luc, at all. Luc Besson can apply. Luc Besson can apply, of course, but um, Luc Besson the Telecinco point is <laughs> when we <laughs> in the phase that Una we work on the script. <laughs> We might not know what is the budget. The budget has not been made because the script is not ready, you know? So, no, no problem. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> de de què estaríem parlant? Ho dic perquè estem parlant de molts diners. That's what I said, it's like... Mm, hi, ha, bueno, hi, ha, hi ha tot un escalat que, bueno, uh, diguem-ne que entraria dintre d'un un engranatge del Complexion Bond. Uh, estem parlant de, de 5 milions d'entrada. Mm. Go ahead with the uh, question. Um, I was, well, when the project is in an early stage and um, actually the key of the project is the research, um, does it make sense to apply to this? Well, I, actually the research, uh, the project needs um, dramaturgy. Um, we're looking for the keys. Uh, I think you know? for the script check, definitely it makes sense. Does it? It makes sense, yeah, of course. If you have a great project, I mean, it's just an example, let's say, you have access to, I don't know, to Assange, or uh, just a stupid uh, thing to say, but to, to someone, but you didn't, you don't know what you get, you don't know how close you get, go, and so on and so on. You can, of course, come and we discuss what would be the best for the project, what would be plan A, plan B, plan C, you know, so. In this case, um, um, what's, what's, uh, you know, the documentation you need for applying um, instead of the treatment. For the script check, I think, can they apply also with a longer synopsis? Yeah. Project description, two, three pages of what is the topic, who could be the characters, and what could be a form of narrative or structure or whatever. In order to give more information for the your question and the previous question, is that we agree with the sources responsible that, of course, you can present uh, two or, or a couple of scenes with dialogue as well. Is it the media, the, the, the media way? Yeah, the media, yeah. the media minimum way. If, but you're talking about a documentary, no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it so in documentary, in, then the, in uh, the fiction version, you could also have maybe a longer synopsis or story d um, description, and then one or two scenes written out. You take out of your script that you think these scenes are working very good. That's also everything that helps us to understand more about the project, not spending like two, three days for reading, it's of course helpful. No, I'm just talking about script because for the for the script check, but for the main workshop, of course, you apply whatever you have, script, visual material, formal works, everything. That's yeah. It's, I'm going to be sniper, really. Okay. I'm really. This is not a. It's not a good closing question. It's more like a, a sniper. It's how to survive when you know. When you think you know where you're going, how to survive? To how many voices? To listen. To listen that they're going to tell you to get different directions. How to distinguish? the good ones and the bad ones. Think about Ali McBeal, and all of a sudden I see the world in a different way, and I cannot trust with the good soul of a bad soul, of a horrible soul, that they are there giving me all the best, beautiful, and get best advice for my baby. This is my baby. How I can trust her? How I can trust that voice? How I can trust him that I'm going to improve the project? In which point you have to not be the mother or the father of your baby, 
and think it's a common baby. That's the crucial for a creator. And that's the point where training, sometimes even training always is good because always you're learning something. But when you apply with your baby, it's quite too many voices. Sometimes you're confused. Specifically, sometimes the project is really open, but sometimes the project is really has has the own path. I think it's a, like the best question and most important one because we have also, of course, people who are workshop addicts who go to all workshops but never make a film. It's like um, my first documentary was about amateur filmmakers. Um, I love them, like old men and women who shot for ages Super 8 films and never made a film. Um, and they had the best equipment, uh, like much better than I had it, and they never made a film. So this should, of course, not happen. But I think if you really want to tell a story, if you, it's really inside you, if you are the one of the few people who can tell this story, then there is a core in your heart that that is unshakable. But you have to be self-critical, of course, and and listen. And when you listen to different people, I had, to, for example, I went to a workshop with my this first fiction film. I went to um, Equinox, script writing, very very established one. And in the morning, Equinox I Equinox is the one that Jean Moreau made. Uh, yes. At the beginning. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So in the morning, I had. Um, I had Jim Hart, I think. Um, it's a um, great writer who wrote Bram Stoker's Dracula and worked with Spielberg and stuff. And I had half a day with him. And he said, yeah, this is great because my story was about refugees from Iran in Turkey, what, um, you know, like when they leave their countries and they end up somewhere in Europe. And he said, we need to understand where they are running from, what is in their country. We need to have this first act that is missing in your script, that we see their normal life, you know, what are they running away from, how it's that. Okay, I said, yeah, okay, thank you. In the afternoon, I had a meeting with a French writer. Uh, and he said, I love it that it, you immediately start the story when they are at the border. Because we know anyway what's going on in that place, you know? And, so, and, and it was very interesting for me because then I had to choose which cinema I feel more close to. To the American one that is like explaining it, that has this three act structure and this and that, or to a more kind of European artistic way of thinking. But what it was interesting, what helped me was that it made me think, okay, maybe half of the audience is thinking like this American. They don't understand, they don't know anything about Iran, they don't care, they have their own problems. And it brought into my head, and that's like how it works with me, that I thought, okay, something is missing here, I have to find a solution. It's probably not what Jim Hart wants, to spend 20 minutes for the life of them in Iran till they leave, but there is something. And then I had the idea to show in the beginning of a film an execution scene, and at the end of the film I come back to that. And because you had this f just shocking one minute of execution before the film starts, the audience understood immediately what they're running from. You know, so that that's that was like something that helped me. And I think you will see when you get a lot of feedback, um, at one point you hear some some like when maybe there is a problem in your story and fifty percent say I love it, fifty percent say I hate it. This is a clear question of taste. If you're on the side of love, you t you say, okay, I stand by it, I accept that half of the audience will hate it, but this is my thing, I want to do it. If 70, 80, 90% of the people have a problem with a section of your project, probably there is something wrong with that. It's not a question of taste anymore, it's more a question of structure, dramaturgy, or whatever. Of course, still you can say, fuck it, I do what I want, but then um, you accept the fact that it will be difficult. And there is a nice quote of Jean Cocteau who said um, something like, if you sh show your, your films or your work of art to your films to, to the people and the things they don't like, nourish them. Because that's the only thing that is really original and different. 
So you can also go that way. That's a long answer to a short question, but I it's very important because w especially when you're in a weak position of like being on a development phase of a project and you appreciate the people that you meet, you, you maybe you meet some of your heroes and like in that workshop that I was uh, mentioning of Eurodoc, I also had one ha um, half day with Sidney Pollock. Then what do you say to Sidney Pollock? I mean, fortunately it was good with him because he said he loves the script, he would like to direct it, so I've got like um, good energy from him. But sometimes you get smashed by such people because maybe they don't care so much or you just one of a lot of people and so on. And yeah, don't feel mm, too emotionally uh, about their feedback because a lot of times it's also like this. I hope we don't work like this, but you have a great project with some problems. You, you show it, you, you present it, and then you go to a meeting with a professional. And because the professional knows, doesn't have time so much and, and wants to help you to improve it, he only talks or she only talks about the bad part and doesn't tell you, okay, this and this and this is great, because they are anyway great for that professional, you know, and that's sometimes can happen that it hurts. It hurts you, because first you need to hear the good things. I didn't even expect my last question was going to be so profitable, because it's an excellent closing, Arash, really yeah. how you wrap it up. But let me summarize, uh, in order, always I like to do that, like taking note and summarize what it's been done so far. It's no sources method. Don't be afraid of language problems. Don't be afraid of someone else stealing your ideas, that fear. It's about enacement, and uh, enace your projects. It's about saving time and saving pre-production because you're being efficient. It's about teamwork. It's about more art, but as well business. Collaboration is a way of life because the end of isolation of the writer is over. I mean, the, the end, uh, the isolation of the writer is over. So uh, those are the ideas. We're gonna try with Natalia, Marie, and myself to publish what we've been offering here, but in a nice way and more, more proper to launch uh, the call. This is gonna be available in the website, in the social, and you can apply. And with more data regarding uh, what's gonna happen. But don't worry about that. If it's not gonna publish already, we're gonna to try to see the calendar. Usually being March is too early to, but because it's only four projects, always is as long as Arash can be in Barcelona, we can feed it. Hmm? So it's um, like my second documentary, like more than 10 years ago called Exile Family Movie. So um, it, it's like nowadays you use bigger pictures and stuff like that. But in that case, <coughs> it was a mini DV, sh a documentary shot on mini DV, so I didn't have anything um, big. Can you see it big enough here? Yeah. I will expand it. So uh, this is like the end process of a lot of writing and, and, and taking out and taking in, but I think it's kind of useful so try to have, first of all, nowadays make like big picture, whole picture, whatever. So I had the title here and a quote out of the f from it's from a documentary, um, and it's about um, my family meeting after 15 years of life in exile with the relatives who came from Iran to Mecca. So we pretend, pre uh, pre pretended that we are, although we fled from the Islamic regime, my brother, my sister, my mother, my father, we pretended that we are uh, still Muslims and go back. So with that, uh, we went in, Sa in Saudi Arabia 15 years and uh, after having uh, not seen each other. And that was, so I wrote here a little, little quote, choose the picture. Um, that is telling a lot. Um, then, a like the length is important. For example, when you have a documentary, you should not do it like I did it here, 90 minutes. You should always make 90 slash 52, because when you present a project in pitching places and stuff, 
the commissioning editors, a lot of them have only a 52 minute slot. So if they see 90, they just don't even read your project and you don't you want to avoid that. So write 52 slash 90, a short, you know, like contents, synopsis. A lot of times you have only four or five pages. You're not allowed to have more longer. That's why here everything is on the first page. The contact of the company and the synopsis. This is a short synopsis. And the synopsis is extremely important because a lot of times these people have no time to read. They just read the synopsis. And here, if you read the synopsis, you're it was a lot of work to, to make that synopsis. And I read it for a second for you. Is, do we have time? Yeah, yeah, okay. Please. No. So they can call me anytime. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry for, for Sandra because she wanted to ask me precisely questions. Sorry. No, 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 no. But it's only her. One the rest <laughs> is Lady Gaga. You are Lady Gaga. I am the, the band, the national, no, the local I, band. I just think that it's it's quite helpful because the two the words that we uh, choose then in the end to present the project were all kind of um, really like we thought about it a lot of times. So, an American family living in political, an Iranian sorry, an Iranian family living in political exile in Europe and America decides to organize a secret meeting with the rest of the family, which still lives in Iran and which they haven't seen for more than 20 years. So this one sentence makes very clear who it's about, who are the main people, is the Iranian family living in political exile in Europe and America. So it's a family that is spread in these places. They decide to organize a secret meeting. The word secret sounds intriguing and interesting. Secret, okay. This project is something unique that you can be part of that secret meeting and see what's going on. With catchy, the rest catchy, catchy, catchy marketing. Yes. With the rest of the family, and it's true, it's honest, it's not a lie or, or selling something. Um, with the rest of the family which still lives in Iran and which they haven't seen for more than 20 years. Which means emotions, family, haven't seen each other for 20 years, what does it mean? You know, like it opens up in your head a lot, like the children you haven't never seen, they were born, whatever. Okay. So this is clear. Who are the protagonists? What is the main storyline? Like what hap happens? What we do we see? The second question, the second thing. The only place that proves to be possible for this meeting is Saudi Arabia. Fuck. They have to go to a place where people, they, where they kill people like Khashoggi. So despite all the dangers, <laughs> that's also important, despite all the dangers, it's not easy, it's dangerous to go there. The family members living in exile pretend to be Muslim pilgrims in order to be allowed to enter the holy cities of Medina and Mecca. Because you can go to Saudi Arabia, but if you're not a Muslim, you cannot prove that you cannot go to Medina and Mecca. There, in a small hotel room, the long-awaited tearful reunion takes place after 20 years of separation. Which is clear, they will meet, they will manage, it will be tearful, but it will also be happy and nice. So, but. Then comes the conflict. It proves to be a huge culture clash between the Muslim world and the Western societies of Europe and America. So that makes it clear, you know, it's, um, it's a family that loves each other, they miss each other, but they meet and then you have American way of thinking, um, you have um, Islamic way of thinking, you have European more kind of leftish way of thinking, but they all love each other because they're a family. So. Um, it like it's a lot of um, work to think about wh how what are these elements of your project that you write there. If I would read, for example, some just like this synopsis, if you apply, I would want to see this project. You know, I don't care what is now the treatment and whatever. You know, but of course you need to add some uh, more elements, and that's here. I have I don't go through this now. Just um, to see, I have project history, which is kind of explaining our background, we came when we came to Austria, what is the story and so on. Then here I have state of development that's developed if you got some funding, um, even if it's regional, whatever, stipendium, anything, you can write it down because that pushes your project a little bit more up. You, We get the feeling that you got already support from someone, someone believes in you. 
Um, so I, I was on Eurodoc script, I wrote where, where was sources. Then if you shot something, that's like a crucial thing. If you shot already some material of your film, um, in my case, it was clear there, there is no other way. I had to go alone to that journey. I shot myself, it's shaky, whatever, but it's kind of authentic and, and so on. But you have to be, you have to take care of that. If you shot a lot of material, you have to discuss with your producer if you really want to say you shot all the material, like all the film, because sometimes it's not very helpful to have shot all the film, because then what can you develop, you know? So it's better to go to such workshops when you didn't shoot all of the material. Maybe you started, maybe you had to secure some material. You can always um, talk about securing material because sometimes you have a character who is maybe old or you have an event that you can only shoot w within that time frame, do that. So um, the format is important, and nowadays not so much. Then if you have some people who are kind of um, like famous or whatever, or, or good people to who are attached, who help you, write them down. Then the delivery date is important for some people, like especially TV stations, they want to know when can they play the film. If you have a cinema documentary, cinema f film, um, you have this cinema protection laws that you can, uh, I mean, Austria is like 18 to 12 months after the cinema release, the TV stations cannot play the film. So that's also something that you have to consider. TV stations don't like it so much. Arte is not so happy with this kind of stuff because they have to wait for a long time and maybe the topic is hot now but they have to wait one year and so on. So there also it's possible to find creative ways. We had, for example, a film about children, a cinema documentary with uh, an Austrian TV station, and they wanted to have something very quickly, and we made a deal that they pay us more for like funding, and we make a half-hour reportage-style quick documentary for um, their program and then they wait one and a half years till they can play the long version. So there are possibilities to discuss with them. The estimated budget, it's sometimes interesting. And also to write down what you miss, how much of that budget you miss, how much um, is already in place. And then what you said is like the director's um, intention or uh, yeah, intention with the film, this is more kind of sociological or whatever philosophical thoughts why this film is important. And um, here I have director's note on the audiovisual form planned. That's also important. Do you want to make a direct cinema, for example, documentary? Do you want to have a only talking heads? Do you want to have an experimental film? Is it a Chris Marker style documentary? and so on, that's also important to, ma to make clear. Because it's not about taste or something, it's more about the clearer you are with that, the more we as selectors or dramaturgs or, or whatever understand that you are thinking deeply about your project. You're really, you, you know what you want to do and you need help to develop that. Yeah, and then here I had um, I, I wrote something uh, like about the characters. That's also always quite helpful. This is, of course, very old school. I did it in Word. It's from 10 years ago, whatever, but you can make it in InDesign. You can make it with fancy pictures. I just had screenshots of mini DV material. Um, so I made it like this. I said, they are the Austrians, they are the Americans, the Iranians, the Canadians, and so on. Of course, this film had the problem that we had too many characters. That's why I deci we decided to make the Austrians, and the Iranians, and so on. So the Iranian family was like one character inside that one character, a lot of people. And then at the end, a short CV of the, of the director here um, and the company profile. So it's quite simple. But what you write is important, that is, is thought. That, that was it. Thank you for sharing questions from the audience. Thank you for sharing I mean, the... Probably you know all this, so it was anyway yeah, not actually, so important. Actually, everything always is very nice to heard it from, uh, 
from um, the other side, from the professional director, not as a mentor, director. Yeah. Because usually you, uh, I bring a study case when I mention that Bettina and other colleagues here, I've been here always helping me with a study, uh, a successful study case presenting development call, always explain how they introduce the project, how they think is the best way, the do's and don'ts. So it's, you, you, you just play that part, that part of which is the best. We have different levels of uh, beginners, people with a media goal, and so it's always useful. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. And it was like an old school thing, but it's more like about the, the structure and so on. You can make yeah. it much cooler. And, and you know why it's so useful? Because now media, learning about that, it's the first year and that they give, uh, give as a supporting document the type of storyline or, s or the summary of the things you should uh, put in your, um, um, in your an annex at the end, 10 megas, yeah. my English is rusty, sorry. Uh, the last document that you have to uh, upload with the summary of the project, where everyone is doing different pro different ways, and they yeah. you have to follow this scheme with all those things. Don't miss this, this and that, in this order. Yeah. So it's a supporting and of course one other to thing bring a storyline. Yeah. One other thing is that the trailer, that we have to have, a like nowadays they always want to have a trailer or s something, which especially for I mean for fiction films it's quite difficult. You can have a you can make a mood film out of other films except excerpts, but for documentaries you need to have something, and um, it's sometimes better. For example, if if you have of course moving images is great. If you don't have good images, uh, good moving images, the sound is bad. It looks amateurish or it's just research material. Then it's better not to shoot sh to show that, but it's but to just choose. 10 pictures, 10 good photos with captions, this is a story about this and this and that, with some music if you want, um, to make it more feelable. Because it's very bad to show something and say, the but the film will not be like this. You know, that's, um, we want to hear how the film will be and not how the film will not be. And if you cannot make a proper trailer with your material that you already have, you just have a very good interview with your main character, then just choose two great sentences and quotes of that charismatic character and show this to the people, you know? So that's this. So it's nice because this is the part of uh, included in sources. It can help you in order to, if you decide to prepare a better project, for media. That's yeah, and when we meet in the script check, we of course one of our work is also to go through your document and to restructure it together, to make it, you know, like improve it together. Maybe to look at your trailer and give feedback on the trailer, um, uh, how to re-edit it and and stuff like that, so that you have a better presentation of your project. You can express better how what you want, which is for later. Um, steps of your project and applications helpful. No questions? No, you had something. Questions? Okay, don't. Arash, thank you for doing that double up thing at the end, oh, like sorry. a kind of an anchor. Actually, it's super Lady Gaga with an anchor because that's what you're going to do. This place. Uh, it's nice showing place you and have, sharing, yeah. sharing part of your uh, intimacy of how yeah. you present an early project.